So 1.7 is review for all of you, finding perimeter and area. This is the start of learning all of those formulas on the formula sheet. We're just going to learn a couple today. We're starting with the very basic basics with area and perimeter. Perimeter, we're not going to use a formula. Can someone describe to me how you find the perimeter of any polygon? Yes. Yes, it's very simple. You add up all the sides. So you're just going to add up the sides of any polygon. So I'm going to give you three very easy examples. You can get a sketch of each picture. Perimeter, you do not need to show work. Once we get to area, you do. I'll show you what I want for that. But for perimeter, you can just pretty much do this in your head. What is the perimeter of the first one? 16, yes. So perimeter equals 16. What would the units be? Okay. What about on the triangle? And what does regular mean again? Yes. So, knowing that, and what is this shape called? How many sides? Six. Hexagon. Regular hexagon. So, what would the perimeter be? Thirty. Five on all sides. Thirty feet. Questions. All right, perimeter of a circle has a formula. Does anyone know the word? Don't say it if you have the notes in front of you. What is the word for perimeter of a circle? Circumference. Anyone know the formula? Yes? That we are going to get to. That's the area formula. Anyone know circumference of a circle? Pi times, diameter. Pi times diameter is one of them. There are two. So pi times diameter is one of them. The other one is 2 pi r. Somebody tell me why those are exactly the same thing. Yes. Yes, so if you take the radius, which is just halfway across the circle, and times it by 2, that's the exact same thing as the diameter. So you can use either one, interchangeably, whatever one you feel comfortable with. I tend to just use whatever one that goes along with whatever they've given to me. So this one, they're talking about the radius, so I'm going to use the one that has the radius in it. So this is what I want to see for work. From here on out until the end of the year, anytime you're doing an area, a volume, circumference, anything like that, other than perimeter of a polygon, I need three lines of work. This is just going to be standard all year long. So we're going to use this formula. So formula is first. So we're going to write down the three things I want. So always write the formula first. Second step, put your numbers in. So for instance on this one, all I'm going to do is replace the R with a 3. Step 3 is the answer. I'm not asking for a lot. Formula, put the number in, give me the answer. So, I want you to use your pi button on your calculator. I want everybody to find their pi button on their calculator. If you don't have a pi button on your calculator, I want you to use this number instead. I don't want you to stop at 3.14. I want you to use 3.14159 so that we all get the same answer, so that you get the same answer as what you get in the book. If you only use 3.14, it's going to be a little bit off from what the book has. So I want you to use all of these numbers if you don't have a pi button. Pi button is way better because it actually puts the whole number in. 
So if you take 2 times pi times 3, somebody tell me what we get rounded to the nearest tenth. Yes? 18.8. 18 Is that rounded properly? Yes? Okay, I don't have one in front of me, so I'm trusting you guys. 18.8. .8. There's no units, so we don't need units. Okay, so those are our three lines of work that I want to see from here until May. Next picture, they give us the diameter, the distance all the way across. So I'm going to use the formula that has the D in it. So I write my formula first. I put my number in. And I write my answer. Nearest tenth. You can just shout it out, whoever gets it first. 40.8. Agree, disagree? Okay, perfect. Questions on perimeter or circumference? So we're not going to have a formula for perimeter. We just add up all the sides. Both of these formulas are on your formula sheet. You don't need to memorize them, but you do need to know how to use them. Ready for the next slide? All right, so I want you to write down these three formulas. These are the three we're going to focus on in this section. Area of squares and rectangles is BH, which stands for base times height. Area of triangles, very commonly forgotten when we do triangles. Students always forget the one-half. Triangles are one-half base times height. Area of circles, which Eric brought up earlier, pi r squared. All of these should look semi-familiar to you, at least have, having seen them earlier in life. What I'm going to do after you get these formulas down is I'm going to give you four problems. I'm going to give you enough time to solve all of them. And then I want four volunteers, brave souls, to come up and write their work on the board. So if you have the notes already, you can get started on those. So what I want, rounded to the nearest tenth, These are your four problems. So I'm going to give you enough time. And I want all three lines of work for each one. So I'll give you time. All the markings are on there to show you what kind of shape it is. Just give your best guess. If you don't know, if you don't know which numbers to use, give it your best shot. When you're done with all four problems, you can put your pencil down so I know you're done.
few people are just finishing up. Could I get one brave soul to write any of the four problems? It doesn't. You don't have to do the first one if you don't want to. For all three lines of work. You get to use the fancy schmancy pen. Yes. Thank you. I agree with everything she has up here. The only thing I would change, later on this year, we're going to be learning formulas that have capital B's in them that mean something different than the base. So I am going to adapt this first line to look like this. So technically what you did was not wrong. I would rather see area equals lowercase b, lowercase h, because we're going to learn what capital B means in a later chapter in the spring. What else would make this better? Yes. What would they be? Centimeters squared, because we're in area. We're working in two dimensions, so they put a two there to state that we're working in two dimensions. Need another brave soul. Yes, Paige. It's one tiny little thing that would make her answer a little better. Just a tiny little squared right there. Questions on that? Why did, I have a question, why did she pick 5 and 12? Why didn't she put the 13 in there anywhere? How do you know it's not a base or a height? What's important about base and height and how they connect? Okay, and how, what do I need to look for when I'm picking base and height, how do they intersect each other? Yes? A right angle, hugely important. You always want to pick the one that makes a right angle. So 5 and 12 is awesome. Um, any of the other two? You don't have to do the circle if you don't want to. Yes? What is one thing that would make this better? Yep. She forgot the one half, which is very extremely super duper common mistake. Okay, so don't feel bad. It happens nearly every time. So we'll put the one half there, which means we'll just times this also by one half, which would make our answer what? centimeters squared. Perfect. Yes? Last one? Or question? If you divide by 2, it's the same thing. Yeah, yes. Two. Yep. You can do that, certainly. Other questions? Anyone want to do the circle? Three lines of work. Formula, numbers you put in, answer. Yep.
Agree, disagree? Agree? All right. Awesome job. Yes. Good, good question. The formula right here, pi r squared, we need the radius. This is the diameter, so we have to cut that in half. So 4.5 is what you should put in there. Yes? Okay, another good question. Could you put 9 there and not square it? If we take 4.5 and we square it, what is that number? Somebody tell me. 4.5 squared. 20.25. So 4.5 squared is 20.25. So if we just keep 9 there, I think we, a common mistake, and actually I saw this a lot on the quiz, um, squaring doesn't mean you're timesing by 2, you're timesing it by itself. So when you have something squared, if we were just timesing this by 2, we would get 9. But since we have to square it, it's going to be a different number. Other questions? All right. Last page then. Perimeter of a regular pentagon is 35 centimeters. I want to know the length of one side. Tell me how you did it, Eric. Uh, I did 35 by, by 5. And we get? All right, so I'm going to draw a picture for this. Pentagon. It is regular, so we know the sides are the same. And the angles are the same. That's what regular means. Pentagon means 5. Perimeter equals 35. So we have to cut that 35 into five equal parts. That means that all of these sides have to be seven in order to give us that 35. So the length of one side would be seven centimeters. This one we're going to draw a picture for, which will help. And if you don't have the notes, we can draw the picture right away and we'll just label it. So draw a rectangle. Over to the side, put perimeter is 20 inches. One side is 8 inches long. So let's put an 8 right here. How can we do this? What else should we put on the picture? Yes. 20 divided by 8, and that would go where? Okay. If we do 20 divided by 8, let's just go with, what would that be? How much? 2.5. So if we put a 2.5 here and an 8 here, what would that add up to? 21. So we're close. We're close. Let's try something else. Yep. 8 Okay, so we know that so far we have a total of 16 taken up out of the perimeter. So what's left over is 4. So each side would be 2. So if we add those together, we get our 20 inches. So drawing a picture tends to help a lot. We have one left. A working backwards problem. So I'll wait till you get this one copied down. We know the area of the triangle, we know the base, and we need to know the height.
good rule of thumb whenever you're doing problems like this is if there's a formula involved, you write it down. Because then we can organize our information. So, our formula, based on the word right here, would be what? Area equals 1 half BH. So let's fill in what we do know. What do we know based on this problem? The base is 6. The area we know is 36. We don't know the height. So let's simplify what's on the right-hand side. How could we write that? Mm -hmm. 3H. So what's the height? 12. I divide by 3. Height is 12 centimeters. Should I have this square? Why not? Because it's not area, it's a height. Okay, so we just have 12 centimeters for the height. Questions on that? Mm 